Praise the Lord. Welcome back to another predestined, predestined kingdom ministries, international videos. I am Kenithia Jane or Kenithia Johnson. Um, yeah, I'll get right into it. The heavenly, uh, happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Sorry. Happy Sabbath. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another day. I pray on to say what you want me to say and get off this camera in Jesus name again. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, guys. So, hi. Welcome back. I am going to be doing a movie video. A movie video. This movie is called Old Rugged Cross old rugged cross so in this movie pastor shepherd had um he was basically traveling in the ministry for the lord so he stopped in this town the lord had told him to stop in this town and however it was worked out he was it started out with him sleeping out in this church that was um closed down it, it had been abandoned for a while and so um i don't know how he knew the real estate guy but it's just how the movie started so <laughs> he ended up um sleeping in there and then um the guy asked him, the real estate guy who was over the church, asked him, do you just want to um, try to rent it out or whatever since you're already a pastor? And so he said, I really have to pray and talk to the Lord God and talk to God and see what he says first because I don't have a congregation to keep up with the payment. So I really need to make sure he's leading me this way. So he did that he did just that he ended up doing a six month lease hallelujah there's this bigger church in the town called a victory church this pastor has backslidden and his ministry is not reflecting jesus it's reflecting money and 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 that's it like it's like you give more to god god gonna give more to you the more you pay the more god give like it was it wasn't taught the right way <laughs> it was not taught the right way it his men you you want your ministry to reflect jesus as much as possible it wasn't healing done it wasn't no prophesying being done like it was it was basically what a lot of common churches do now preach about money and go home and this pastor was living like abundantly he was he had four five 50 inch screens tv he was oh yeah he was a drunk he was still drinking um telling people to pay more so god could get him more he was a drunk he was drinking like heavy like he was drinking. That's the scripture the Lord want me to show y'all today. So he was drinking. And so long story short, I'm going to um, cut out some of the dramatics and get to the story. He was dating this lady, the, the, the corrupt pastor who needed some correction. I'm sorry. The Holy Spirit is showing me this Bible verse that he been he told me for the last few days to say it. Give strong drink to the one who is perishing. Proverbs 31 verse 6. Proverbs 31 verse 6 is what the Holy Spirit is saying. <laughs> now the King James, the New King James Version says, Give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Hallelujah. The International Version says, Let beer... They be changing up a lot of words in this NIV version. Like, 
<laughs> Let beer be for those who are perishing and wine for those who are in anguish. Hallelujah. So that's what helped me stop drinking. When I saw that, and then I, I'm still coping with the weed part. We still getting off of that. But I don't smoke black and mouths no more. I never smoke cigarettes. I don't drink hard liquor. I used to drink black um I used to drink brown and white liquor. I used to drink wine. Like we was out here. <laughs> <laughs> we was going to the strip clubs. We was out here. So all of that the Lord delivered me from. We still we almost done with the weed part. And that's just because I keep praying I don't go back to it. Because he's already healed me from smoking weed, but I went back to it like at least two two times within the last year alone or two years alone. So it's a process and I'm not rushing him and he's still blessing me. But anyway. Give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to him whose life is bitter. This pastor's life, he wasn't happy. He wasn't. It, his, he didn't know. He didn't have, hallelujah, Holy Spirit. He didn't have a connection with the Lord God. So he was out here just preaching the word, telling the people, um, you could sin basically because you're forgiven. Like it was the like he was Hashaba. He was living in an abusive life towards God. Very abusive. Like he was just doing stuff because he could get away with it and wasn't really correcting others. And so in the movie, the Lord brought Pastor Shepherd into town to change all of that. That one encounter with Pastor Shepherd fixed the whole little small town. So it started with Pastor Shepherd talking to the other pastor's girlfriend. And she was she was just very friendly. She was too friendly, but she was very friendly. <laughs> and she went over to him and um I don't I, I how did they find out about each other? Because a family had left Victory Church already for being mistreated. They they saw Jesus wasn't there. And so that same day that they was complaining, they saw Pastor Shepherd standing out in front of the church. And so it was just bum bum done. Like divine connections made. It was done. <laughs> So that family ended up helping him and, uh, and other people started gradually leaving the other church and going to Pastor Shepherd's church. Hallelujah. So what else was um this your ministry? This this video is for people who are called and chosen in a walk with the Lord. This video is not for everybody. Hallelujah, this video is not for everybody. This video is for chosen prophets, pastors, bishops, apostles. Like this is a video for um the leaders, the spiritual fathers. Hallelujah. So <laughs> the life coaches. <laughs> the Lord is calling some of the life coaches to be his life coaches. Um, it's I don't know, he just had me bring that up. Some of the life coaches. So the Lord has his own specific life coaches that he's using in this season. And so the people ended up going to church. Don't expect people to everybody to go to your ministry. Your ministry is really reflecting the Lord God Jesus. And a lot of people haven't been taught to believe in that way. They think that what the Lord did centuries ago years ago he can't do it now or he doesn't it's shabbat or he doesn't do it now and so thanks shabbat amen holy spirit my people die because of lack of knowledge he is here jesus i praise you daddy i praise you i praise you so This corrupt pastor went through a whole Job situation. The church got taken away from him. Everything. He even tried to take Bishop Shepherd down because he saw, um, he saw the Lord was building him up. And so he tried to spread lies. He accused him 
of something that didn't happen that he was accused of in his past. He brought it back up. He um, had his son lie on, on Pastor Shepard saying um, all kind of stuff that wasn't true. And guess what? It backfired. And it, everybody ended up leaving this corrupt pastor to go to Bishop Shepherd, right? And so he even had a youth revivals. Like the youth the youth were leaving Victory Church to go to this church, the, the, the better church. And it's, it's, it's not that um, this church was better, but you can see the Lord. You could see Jesus' hand on this ministry, and that's what you want to do. And so now this part of the video is for the believers. It's for the Christians. You don't want to just go to a church to say you go to a church, okay? You want to go to a church where your pastor is reflecting the light of the Lord God, Jesus. Where the where he's not just asking for money, but the pastor is actually laying hands to pray on you. I mean, this pastor wouldn't even talk to the people after church. It's like he was allergic to these people. <laughs> the lady asked him to come have dinner with the family two times. I mean, this corrupt pastor was like, no, I'm going to, uh, no, that's it. I'm not hungry. But then he went and bought some lunch. Like, you got to pay attention to all of that. Because the Lord is saying right now, my sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. So it's your job to know your father. It's your job to know your shepherd. It's your job to see that. You have to. Because the devil is nasty. You know how I got here? Watching the devil. Amen. Watching Jesus first. But watching the devil attack me. And, and being helpless at one point. Until I, I said, okay, now I'm, I can't do the same stuff you did to me. But the next time you did it, I see what you're doing. And so that's why you got to know, you got to, you got to, you got to be, you, I can't tell you to be smarter than the devil, but he is very, very smart. A lot of people be like, oh, Kenithia, you smart. It's because the devil done attacked me so many times between the, the Lord blessing me with his knowledge, wisdom, and understanding and allowing the devil to attack me and me remembering what the devil did. I wish a devil would. I'm so serious. You have to know when the devil is speaking to somebody. I, sh I should do a video on that. <laughs> I should do a video on that. How to know when the devil has entered into somebody. I feel like it's going to help a lot of y'all get free. How to know by certain phrases, by certain words. How to know if the if you're speaking to somebody and the devil just entered them and start talking to you. Have you ever had that done before? I did. So I'm going to help you. I'm going to make a video on this. Shabbat. We're going to help a lot of people. We're going to help a lot. Hey, souls will be saved in Jesus' name. I prophesy. I got to do it right after this video. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. Let me hurry up and finish this one. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so one night. Yeah, they had the youth, they had the youth on fire. Cripples was rising out of their wheelchairs and walking. They started seeing the power of Jesus that they read about in their lives, right? And so the corrupt pastor one night got really drunk. Yeah, the the, the corrupt pastor was supposed to be building a new church and all of that. And, and, and it was all for him. It wasn't for the Lord God. It wasn't for Father God. It wasn't for him. And that's why when the Lord say, whenever you do something or in all that you do, do it for the Lord. Do it for the Father. Don't do nothing for you. I'm going to sow this seed because I, no, 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 no. Father, I sow this seed in obedience because you said if we sow this seed, Hallelujah, Daddy. First, you told us to give. So, I'm going to give just to give. But if you're trying to seal something, you need to say, well, Father, you said if I sow this seal, provoke your hand. So, I seal it in Jesus' name. Don't forget to give just to give. That's, you give just to give first. And then, you, if you want to seal on something, you can do that. So, anyway, guys. He wasn't doing none of that. He was very corrupt. And it took this whole situation to change him and show him 
what a Jesus ministry really was and how he was supposed to do it. He ended up getting restoration. He got his wife back. Yeah, it was a lady. She became a preacher's wife. The Lord kept showing me that. She became a preacher's wife. She became a preacher's wife. Praise the Lord. She was a preacher's wife, so that's for somebody. You're going to be a preacher's wife. <laughs> oh, Lord. Praise the Lord. That's it, guys. I got to do this other video, the Lord's saying. I pray y'all have a blessed day. Shalom.